joined now by Del Delaware Democratic Senator Chris Coons to try and uh, figure that out. Uh, Senator, thanks for joining us, number one. I used this analogy during the campaign. Donald Trump was somebody who stained his shirt, and instead of getting a new shirt, he kept staining his shirt in order so people couldn't figure out where the original stain was. Is that what's happening now? Are there so many controversies uh, that he'll be able to survive this one because the, the it's just so loud? Uh, well, Katie, that's a fascinating metaphor. Uh, I'm reminded of the proverbial saying, the curse is, may you live in interesting times. Um, I am worried, frankly, that the American people are getting exhausted, uh, and as you put it, uh, that somehow uh, President Trump will avoid accountability uh, or responsibility for a number of things that have happened in the last few weeks uh, simply because of the sheer uh, drumbeat, uh, the steady pressure of new developments. Um, in the next two weeks here in the Senate, um, I expect we will move from alarming press reports to actual evidence. We will get whatever tapes or transcripts or memos there are. Uh, tomorrow, all of us will get to question Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. And next week, I am optimistic that we'll hear from former FBI Director Jim Comey in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee, the Senate Intelligence Committee, or possibly both. That will allow us to move from allegations in the press to facts in front of us here in the Senate. To be fair, Senator, without the New York Times or the Washington Post or the other uh, news organizations that have been doing reporting on that, uh, NBC included, uh, where would the Democrats be? Is, are, is the press doing their job? Or are the Democrats doing their job to try and un uncover a lot of these details? Well, Katie, there's a lot of investment by press outlets in investigative journalism, uh, and I'm grateful for that. A free press is one of the key uh, pillars of our constitutional order. Uh, so is uh, respect for law. Uh, we've only had one previous incident uh, where an FBI director was fired by a president in modern times. That was by President Clinton, and it was with good cause, and it was something that was um, widely explained, well understood, and he had a replacement uh, in line who had broad bipartisan support soon thereafter. This is a very different sort of firing of an FBI director. Uh, and I am grateful that the press has dug into the details uh, and that we've learned about a number of alarming developments, uh, whether it's the inappropriate sharing of highly classified information with the Russian foreign minister in the Oval Office uh, or the memos uh, that former FBI director Comey uh, allegedly wrote to file immediately following deeply troubling conversations uh, in which uh, President Trump tried to influence uh, ongoing FBI investigations. Speaking of lining up a new FBI director, the White House now says that Joe Lieberman is somebody that they are considering. Uh, would Joe Lieberman be an acceptable FBI director in your estimation? Well, Katie, that's, a, that's an interesting development. Uh, I've generally been saying uh, that the most desirable candidate would be someone with a long career uh, in federal law enforcement, not someone uh, who has stood for election. Um, I know Senator Lieberman. Um, he uh, served as the Attorney General of Connecticut. Uh, he's a graduate of Yale Law School. Um, and I believe he served uh, on the Homeland Security Committee uh, as well as Armed Services and so would have um, some familiarity with intelligence matters. Um, you know, I think he would be a significant improvement over a number of other nominees that have been floated. Um, my advice to the president, if he happens to be watching, um, is that he really take his time and that he uh, conduct a thorough search and that he come up with a nominee who will enjoy broad support here in Congress. It is critical uh, that we have a next FBI director who can command support from across the political spectrum here in Congress uh, to move past this moment in which the FBI uh, is perceived as being the subject of uh, real interference and intrusion uh, by the Trump administration. If you see that uh, Comey memo, and it does turn out to be true that the president asked him to back off the Flynn investigation, do you believe that is obstruction of justice? Well, the details of a charge of obstruction of justice are hard to prove, uh, but that would certainly be an alarming development. Uh, it would make it clear uh, that uh, President Trump had directly and personally tried uh, to influence the outcome of an FBI investigation into one of his most senior uh, campaign and cabinet officials, former National Security Advisor Mike Flynn, uh, someone who did ultimately have to resign in disgrace after uh, it became clear that he had lied uh, to the vice president. Um, and there is an ongoing investigation uh, into the conduct of the National Security Advisor. Do you advisor. believe that's obstruction of justice? Um, I think it's uh, certainly in that neighborhood. Um, there's a number of elements of proving the charge of obstruction of justice that requires proof of intent, uh, and I think there'd have to be more than uh, just the allegations we have now. Uh, but as you said, 
uh, if uh, former FBI Director Comey produced the memo and came in front of us and testified, uh, we'd be well on our way uh, to an obstruction of justice charge. Senator Chris Coons of Delaware, appreciate your time, sir. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.